Alrighty, welcome back. It's Saturday. It's the day that people that have full-time jobs, it's a day to get out in the shop and get something done in your car. And I'm hoping that I can motivate you a little bit to get something done because I'm out here Saturday. I want to do a little bit of work to the bumper. I have the bumper off my 60 Chrysler. It's called the Bat of the Hell. I did that car quite a long time ago. Um, I've had a lot of fun with that car. I've got a lot of thumbs up and I've got a lot of thumbs down. And uh, it did not matter either way. I had fun with the car and that's what matters. Whether you have fun with the car, it's yours, build it to your, your liking, your whatever, and uh, do it your way. Um, yeah, do it your way, please, do it your way. That's the only way that you can realize what makes you happy, is to do it your way. And basically what's going on with the bumper that's on the car right at the present moment, I do not like how it's open right here. I don't mind this part, but I do not mind the open, I don't like the open part there. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a paper pattern I'm going to have to, I'm going to weld a piece of metal in it. I've got some metal right there. It's eighth, I think it is, and I'll be able to grind it down a little bit to make it flush and feel right. Um, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a pattern there. You can come in here. I'll show you the hood. we got the hood in here. i got that all buffed off. i got it blocked out. Everything went, everything went excellent. I have a little place here that I had a little bit of filler on uh, that I can see. And basically that's about it. So ba what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to, I'm going to guide coat it and I would 220 it. And then after I 220 it, then I'm going to guide coat it and 400 it and then paint it. But before that, I'm going to flip it over and do the underneath. I don't think you want to watch me do the underneath of the hood. It's kind of a, you know, it's kind of a job that's you know, hard to watch, but I'm going to flop it over, get Jolene to help me flop it over. Got the bench ready there. We'll flop it over and get the underside done. Also, it's the last day for Jet Setter. Jolene did amazing in it, and uh, it's her last hurrah. They're the final four were picked. She was in amongst the bunch. We have to thank everybody for voting and whoever bought votes. Thank you very much. The amount of support that Jolene got was amazing, and we want to thank you from the bottom of our heart. Appreciate it very much. So after saying that, let's get a little bit of work done. I got the car jacked up. Uh, I got the wheel off on this side. I got some jack stands underneath of it. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of paper, a piece of cardboard, and I'm going to make a pattern, what I want for this bumper, because I want to close it up and make it look right. It's Saturday. Get out in the garage. Do something. Make yourself happy. And the only way to make yourself happy is do what you want. Uh, that's how I do it. So basically what I'm going to do is, is I, I don't like, what I don't like is how the bumper is open there for the wheel, how that's open there. So I, what I'm thinking is I would like to have a piece of metal or added onto the bumper that comes down there and closes that off. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go in here like this. I've got a straight edge on here. Why not I just take the straight edge? And I'm going to go in here like this, and I'm going to trace the back side and see what happens. I might even be able to shove that up in there. I don't know if I want that up in there like that. Not sure. I'm not sure yet. And that's the part of it where you're not sure. Just, just going to go like this. I'm going to lay down the back side. So the bumper that I have is off my 60 Chrysler. I don't know if I hit my mic and knocked it off or not. I want to check it there. But what I have is off my 60 Chrysler and I'm customizing it to make it fit Elvis. And what I want to do is I'm taking this pattern here and I'm going to add metal to the bumper. And when I send this, car, this, this bumper to get chrome, should I put that in my top pocket? Can it sit on it? Yeah, sure. So when I take this bumper off, or I get the things, the, the modifications done to the bumper that I want to get done, I'm going to try to buff off the weld so you cannot tell it's been welded, do the best job I can. You can see on the front, I guess they're called Dagmars, I guess. I did these a long time ago. I made the bottoms on there, and I ground it off so you can't tell. Well, you can tell now because it's rusty. And I, got, I put some side pieces in here and uh, welded them on there and got them on the best I could. Basically what I'm saying is, when it comes to, the, to, the, to getting them chromed, I would clean them up best I could with a, with a DA and sand them off, get them the best I can. And what I've 
noticed or what you know what goes on if somebody wanted to do a real good job on the bumper if you have your bumper and what can I say you don't like what can I say you, get, you, you can feel where the weld is a little bit I've noticed that they can copper them and they can put lead on them and, and straighten things out and uh, make them perfect if they want it to and uh, Basically, that's what I'm thinking. Like, there's three steps on the on the chroming. I don't know the full process on the chroming, but I know that some of the bumpers I've seen be done. They they can lead them to make them perfect. I've got I've got a piece of round. This is round bar here, and this is a piece of round bar coming out here. I don't know what I want it to. If I take it out here, I, I notice that the round bar is underneath here, and it doesn't ma match up with that nice. I do like that though. I do like that. That's what I'm going for right there, I'm thinking. I like that. And basically what I'm doing is, is trying to make it so I like it. I think what I'll do, I got that piece. Gonna have to bend it. I got some eighth plate here. I don't know if I have enough, but I'm gonna go for it. And the bumper welds fine. When you weld to it, that's fine. That looks okay. I'm just gonna hold that there for a second. I know I need a little bit more off. Where did I put that marker? There it is right there. Less talking and a little bit more fabricating here. How's that? I've got, got to use my brain for a minute. And sometimes it, to use your brain, you have to stop talking. So I'm just going to put that on the back side there. I'm going to try to make that fit as best as possible. I want that to come straight down from there. I know I need a little little bit up there. I'm going to cut that off. See what I got. Now, I'd like to butt weld that on the best I could is what I'd like to do. And I will. Just trying to trace it out, that's all. Just a tracing game. I'm just tracing it to make it look the best it can to butt weld it on. And I'm saying that that's not bad. So I'm hoping that I got enough metal on this and I want the thicker metal because I do not want it to warp or I want it to have it buoyant or I want it to be strong. Um, the friend of ours that's helping us with the, with the LS engine, his name's Dane. I noticed uh, he did, he showed me that he was doing the firewall on his car and he had put a couple beads in, in, in the metal and then welded a big piece of metal on his firewall. Well, he had cut that back off because he didn't like it because when he bead rolled it, I, it, it probably stretched it and got it out of place, got it warped up a little bit. You know, got, you know, when you bead roll something, you are stretching the metal. So it's got to go somewhere. So if you bead roll something, it kind of twists it a bit. It probably twisted it and he cut it all off and he put, another, he put a new piece on. He put a flat piece on, which um, makes it easier and makes it better. But also, when, when you do something like that, you do your firewall or you do anything like that, there's different thicknesses of metal that you can use, like on the firewall, where, where it is the firewall, and, and there's no real shape that you're going for. You're going for, for a piece of flat metal to make it smooth off and make it look nice. That's when you could step it up to a 16 gauge or a, or a 14 gauge or whatever, because you were making something that you want flat. And if you know what I'm trying to say, there's different thicknesses of metal for different jobs. Um, where the bumper, uh, where it's the bumper, I would like to use a little thicker metal 
because of the fact that the bump, it's the bumper. So just like what I'm saying about Dane's firewall, where he took the piece off and, and changed the piece to a flat piece of metal, he was saying that he might put some braces in behind it or something like that. Also, a person should know that you can use a different thickness of metal to get what you need. So what I'm saying is Dane could have stepped, you know, if he did or if he didn't, I don't have no idea. I'm just kind of having conversation with him on the computer somewhat. And I don't really even conversate. I get Jolene to write it for me. But what I'm saying is that he could have used this 14 gauge, 16 gauge. And that way there, when he welds that piece of metal in that firewall, he has no problem with the warpage, basically, is what I'm, what I'm saying. Um, yeah, so there's different thicknesses of metal for different, for different jobs. And just because you use, if you use 20, 22 gauge or 20 gauge on the outside of the body doesn't mean you can't use 14 or 16 gauge on the firewall where you're having something flat. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm going to cut this out with, a, with the grinder. So this is kind of a, you know, it's kind of a different job. Not many people, or not, I shouldn't say not many people. There's not many times that you change the bumper on your car, but I've, I've done a few bumpers. I've done a few bumpers. I can remember one time I did a, I was at, um, I was in Utah, and I did a bumper for Bohoff, and, and uh, it was funny because I welded it up, and he could still feel it a little bit, and he didn't like it. <laughs> And that's the way it goes, you know. But I'm hoping that when you when you send it and you get it when it gets coppered, um, if you if you tell them that you have fixed the bumper, obviously they'll know. But I'm thinking that we copper it and they they would block it out so you get that, you know, if it's got a little dip in it or whatever, where the metal comes together and it's got a little dip in it or whatever, they would fix that by blocking it. And I've also seen them use lead. Let's cut this. Probably asking me why I didn't use the plasma cutter. Uh, just grab for the zip cut. That's hot. And I would just had to clean off where I zip, used the plasma cutter. Had to get it out. Just kind of grab the zip cut. Get a nice cut on it. Very first time. And then maybe we can get it to fit in there. I'm going to have to bend it a little bit. That'll be fine. We'll bend it a little bit. But today's the day, Saturday. And it's good to get done what you need to get done before... Before the old beer bottle comes out, we're not having any beer lately. We're, we're how many days in? Uh, we're in a few days. We're, we started the 1st of February, so I don't know what, Feb what day it is today, but we're getting closer to the, to the end, and it'll be nice to have a little drinky poo-poo, you know, to celebrate. <laughs> had the line right there and then I went up a little bit because I forgot when I put that piece on I needed a little bit on that end so I've got a little bit there showing left I went off the line a little bit
generally you do not want to do that <laughs> with a zip cut because it thins the end out and they can take off. But I've noticed that them zip cuts, have, I haven't had a problem with them, so I keep doing it. So I got my piece. I didn't zip the corner off, I see. I got a little corner here I got to zip off. That's hot. Just like you, Jolene, hot. I don't mind it like that, I guess. See a little piece here in the corner could be cut off. This is thicker than what I have on the bumper, but there can be some grinding. There can, be, there can be some grinding to be done. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my marker and show myself where it's got to be bent. Right, right there, you can see in the middle, right there where it's got to be bent. I'm just going to go follow over here, follow down on it, let's do it again. Stick it in there like that. Come on, hold it still. It's just a little bit hot, that's all. That's why I'm dropping in the ball. Um, I'm just kind of wondering. I can hit it if I lay it on. I can hit it on the wood or I can put it in the brake. I think that probably a little much for that. Let's do this. Ba, 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 ba. Hmm. All right, that's all going to fall. When you hit down on something, it comes up. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take a punch here. Punch right over here. And remind yourself, I'll be able to take the mark out of it with a grinder. So when I hit down on that, the metal's going to want to come up. It bends up. Let's check this and see if it'll bend with a little bit there. She's quite thick, boy. She's quite thick. I can put it in the vise and hit it, but you can see how I've got a little bend on it. I'm going to put it in the vise, I guess. Just hit it that way instead of making a mark on it. I've got a little bend on it. You can see as I hit down, the ends want to come up. That's how I used to make wheel lips for things. Take a chisel and uh, draw the wheel lip out, and then you'd run it all, the, hit it with a chisel all the way around the wheel lip, and the wheel lip would turn up at you. Pretty basic. There goes the mass. And right there. That was probably the easiest thing to do. Just put it on the vise. And I haven't got a whole lot of bend in it, just a little bit. Just gonna play with it. I've got more metal than I need, so let's face it. No, I need I want more bend than that. I, I got a boat of fingers out there to come out I want bent. It's not bad though. It's going to bend a little bit more. Let's do it 
this way, I guess. Lost the bend. Try this one. I want it behind that round rod. I like that. I don't mind that at all. I don't mind that at all. I'll do that. Just going to knock this end over a little bit more. Just a little bit. I've got a little gap going on in there. I want to pull it this way and then I'll make this edge fit nice and we'll butt weld that in. It's going good. Going good. Good, I say. And all this takes is, you know, a paper pattern and a little bit of time going back and forth and seeing whether you like it or not. And I like the bumper with that closed in more than I do with it not closed in. Okay, there's no gap up in there. That's fitting there good. Now, yeah. I've got, that's the round rod is holding that in behind the bumper there a little bit. I think that's fine. And right there, that's just welding and beating that bumper in there. This part where it comes down straight can be ground anytime. Want to see if there's any? I think I just want a little bit more. I want just a little bit more. Not much, but a little. So you must admit, with with having the metal so thick. I've got, I've got room to grind, lots of room to grind. That's what I'm saying to myself. I've got lots of room to grind. Getting ready. Now, I'm kind of liking that. Cut that off there a little bit. Seeing there's any distance in between there, that's all. And there is a little. Just matters how I want to put it in there, you know. I like that in behind there like that, if I can get that. I'm going to take a marker. Where did I put the marker in? Put the marker in there, did I? Nope. Let's kick underneath the car and get another one. Fina, want to go outside? You want to go outside, Fina? Let Fina outdoors. It's Saturday. She wants to go outside. Sun shining out there. You know, I can weld it on right now if I want to, but there is a, you know, a position that I really want it in and I'm not gonna allow it to go in unless I like it. You know, I like it like that right there, to be honest with you. That's up in there behind. Cut 
getting too much off it. I won't be happy then, will I? I don't mind that right there, to be honest with you. I'm going to leave it. Take a little bit off the bottom. I want to bang on it again. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. And the reason being is because I can. Just wanted to turn there a little bit. And it would be hard to hit it after I had it on the bumper. I just don't feel like hitting it after I have it on the bumper. I want to weld it on there so it's I didn't think it would be a hard piece to make. It's whether whether you like where it's at or not, basically. That's the end of that story. Um, you like you like where it's at. If you don't, don't put it on. If you do, go ahead, weld it. And that's what I'm gonna do. I don't mind where it's at. I'm going to get a helmet on. Lots of meat to weld to, and the reason being is I've got the right thickness of metal. This here part here I can straighten out with a flapper wheel. take a pair of ice grips. And hold that where I need it. Because it can take off where I'm welding it. It can take off. It wanted to. And we're doing I'm going to get the air turned on just to keep it cooled off. And the reason being is I don't want it to warp up or anything on me, so I'm going to turn the air on. Not warp up on me, but turn and take off because it can move, obviously. We're putting heat to it. I'm going to take, stand back and take a look at it. So I can grind that off with the flapper. I will grind it off the flapper wheel just to bring it down straighter a little bit. And I'm just going to like it better just because you're not going to see in there. And I've got it the same shape as what's going on with this piece. It's here and then turned it like that. So I'm happy with that.
happy with that. Alrighty. Probably wish I had a little more gap going on there, but we'll grind it and weld it, grind it and weld it until it looks right. Well, you can tell the metal's moving because the vice grips, the vice grips fell off. Right? They wouldn't have fell off unless the metal wasn't moving. Checking my sound. Not that I need to be heard. Trying to zap on some good welds. That way there I can grind it off good. right up in here so I can't not burn anything off. Cool air tape there. Without the vice grips holding it there, it has a chance to take off. I'm just hoping that the vice grips stay there. To, as I'm cooling it off, it, goes, it stays in place. That's what I'm hoping. A lot of weld going down my shoe, burning my foot. Yummy. Not really. I'll move my foot, I think. What the heck? Well, 
underneath here. Now, Generally on a patch, you put on a car or something like that, you weld it on, you grind it off, and generally I'll fiberglass it and then body fill it and, and be done with it. On something like this, if I have any you know, imperfections or any low spots where I'm grinding it, then I just go back into the welder and weld it up again and grind it off again. So it's pretty, what can I say? Oh, show them what's down, boys. It's pretty basic stuff, I guess. I'm gonna grind it off make it look the best I can make it look and then I'm if it don't look like I want it to look all smooth off so you, you know the, so the weld is gone transparent well then what I do is I go back and I do it again I think I have a new flapper wheel maybe I can try just make it the job a lot simpler and we wouldn't want to use a a grinder wheel on it I wouldn't think we'll use a flapper wheel and the flapper wheel might give me a better job if I have one. I have a flapper wheel, did I not? I thought I bought a couple new ones here a while. I'm not sure, but I thought I had a couple new flapper wheels. Did you see any new flapper wheels around lately, Jolene? Right here. All right. New flapper wheel, new flapper wheel. It's always nice when you get a new flapper wheel. And we'll take, the, we'll take it off. If there's any edges or anything or any pinholes or anything like that we'll just start the welder up again weld it again and then grind it again we've got one eighth plate plate on there and uh, should be fine let's oh, I think Fina might see somebody out there maybe let's, let's see what we can do really do the best job I can the bumper should be off but I want I want to weld it and grind it up the you know best I can for now but when I get it off then I really can get ground up now Remember that's quarter inch plate, got lots of grind there. Or eight, sorry.
see, you can see where I've got some pinholes, little pinholes right there. I got a little pinhole right there, a little pinhole right there, a couple little pinholes. I'm going to have to hit them with a grinder. And I might even go on the back side and weld it up if I have to. Watch yourself for a second here. hit those pinholes. <clears throat> Fina one in, I must let her in. She's there's there's no uh she lets you know when she's mad too, she just keeps barking. <laughs> huh? Got up and got you in, but yeah. All right. I got a few pinholes here, I see. Yeah, one right there. So basically, this is what goes on. If you want something welded up and you can't tell, you just got to keep welding it and filling the pinholes until it's done. See one right underneath that one. Just putting the welder on it and then closing my eyes. Notice that that took off on me a little bit. Took off away from the. I think that's fine though. It's only away from a little bit. That's fine. I like it that way. Actually, won't hit the paint. So basically, that's what I'm gonna do to get the bumper. To look the way I want to. I got one to do on the other side. I got a little bend going. It goes like this, and then it bends it. You can see on the top here, it goes like this, and then in. So I've got a little bend there in the middle where the bumper is. It kind of fits that. We're going straight up and down now. It's the time to do it when it's on the car, not off the car. Uh, let's face it, now when I get back, I'm also thinking about welding this shot Welding all that seam shut, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But now I have the bumper closed in, so you can't see. It kind of looks like the bumper fits the car now. You know, I got this closed in. Uh, it, it just looks better, I guess. For me, it does. We come on the other side and kind of just look at the other side, see what the other side looks like. Come over here. You can see at this side how it looks on this side, and it's open on this side. And I like, I think I like it better closed off. Well, I hope I do. I get it welded up now. <laughs> so that's basically what I'm doing on Saturday. Is going to close the bumper off on both sides, and uh, 
I'm happy with that. And what happens is when I get it off, then I can finish the weld up in, in the corner here, finish the weld up in there. And if I, if I want to, I can get on the back side and put a little, little weld on that if I want to to make it a little bit stronger. But basically that's what it's going to look like. I'll smooth it off. And then what I do after I do the, the flapper wheel, then I'll get a DA out and, and like an 80 grit probably and smooth it off even some more to get it the best I can. So uh, the people that are chroming it are happy with me. I don't know if they were going to be happy with me or not, but basically that's what I'm trying to do. So it's Saturday. I'm hoping that you get out and do something on your ride. It takes uh, days like this to get something done. Also, I talked about this thing on the top of the engine. I, I'm kind of liking it. I'm, I'm kind of liking the idea of having a, a, a shaker underneath of a shaker hood underneath of the hood that we open it up. So you, you know there is an engine in there. Uh, we'll, we'll take a day and we'll make one of those. And not a day. An hour. How's that? We'll take an hour, an hour, whatever it takes, but we'll make one of those and I'll make it in front of your very eyes and I'll show you how easy I think that is. We've got one corner, two corners, and it's rounded there, but we will do that very quickly and uh, we'll get one done and we'll show you how we do it. But have a good Saturday, everybody. Let's give away a hat or a shirt. So I got to go to the other side, make another piece of one eighth plate. I got to find a piece of one eighth plate. Actually, that's the only piece I could find. So I have to find a piece to do the other side. With the one eighth plate that I've got on there, I can grind it and smooth it and grind it and smooth it and do you know do as it please. The bumper is quite thick itself too. So you've got a little bit of room to play there. And uh, so that wasn't a bad job at all. I don't think that was pretty pretty easy. I'm going to find a piece, another piece of one eighth plate. And uh, Fina wants to go back at doors. She can't make up her mind, but that's okay. She can't make up her mind. She's a dog. She's a dog. You never know the old, you know, the, the month not, you know, playing with the beer bottle might be, be a good thing that probably should continue if I can, you know, who knows. J Tuck. J Tuck. Ready for another great video. Well, thank you very much, J Tuck. You've taken your time. You deserve a hat or a shirt of your of your choice. You get a hold of Jolene. I don't know if that was a great video or not, but it was quite a simple thing to do to modify the bumper on the car. Basically, you just kind of weld it up the best you can, grind it off, flush it off the best you can, uh, grab your D, grab your flapper wheel, do the weld with the flapper wheel. You wouldn't want to use a grinder and gouge it. So you flapper wheel it off, make it look the best you can, get your old DA out, uh, you can, and sand it, make it look the best you can, and, and leave the rest to them. Have a good one, everybody. You can fix your bumper if you want to. You can do anything you want. Have a good one.